So now we're going to take a look at naming some alkane rings. We call these cycloalkanes. So, and simply, you, if they're named as your parent chain, uh, instead of just saying plain hexane or pentane, you'd say cyclohexane or cyclopentane uh, to name that parent chain. Uh, you should also know we're going to start looking at some alkyl halides, and the halogens are named as substituents. And instead of saying fluorine, you say fluoro, and typically that's the way it works with the halogens. You just add O to the end, so fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodo, respectively. So we'll just kind of sneak these in here as we're naming alkanes. Uh, they're just named as substituents coming off there, and they have their own you know, particular location based on alphabet and all that stuff. When you're listing substituents, no special priority given to them here. Uh, in this case, when you have a ring, you don't really have any ends. And so in this case, obviously, the ring is our longest chain. So we'll find out when you have a ring uh, and you have other carbons that are not part of the ring, either the ring is your parent chain or the not ring uh, is your parent chain, the straight chain. But you can't use parts of both to get your parent chain. Uh, we'll see the relevance of that in a second here. So in this case, this is six carbons as our parent chain in a ring. That's cyclohexane. And in this case, uh, we've got a chloro substituent. It's the only substituent. But notice with a ring having no ends, we get to choose where carbon one goes. And if you only have one substituent, you're going to make that carbon number one. And so there's carbon one. And in this case, whether I go around clockwise or counterclockwise is arbitrary since there's no other substituents. If there were, though, you'd go around either clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever got you to the second substituent sooner to give it a lower number. Uh, so in this case, with one substituent, it always by default has to be at position one. And as a result, you don't include one as the name. So for only one substituent, you never include the one in the name. So instead of saying one chlorocyclohexane here, we're just simply going to say chlorocyclohexane. If you include the one, it's technically wrong, and I've definitely seen professors take points off for that. Uh, if we look at the next example here, this is a di-substituted cycloalkane. So, and in this case, We've got, again, a six carbon chain. We do have a carbon this time that's not part of the chain here in this methyl group, and it's only one carbon. So we couldn't just like try and number through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and try and number around that way. And again, the key is either the ring is the parent chain or the, what's not part of the ring is the parent chain, but you can't use elements of both to get your parent chain. And so in this case, we have another example of cyclohexane. So and if we go to number the longest chain, we've got a couple different options. If I make where the chloro is located number one, then I definitely want to go around clockwise. That way, where the methyl group would be located at carbon two. But I've got another option here. And the other option here would be to start where the methyl group is as number one. I'll put that in green there. So and from here, I'd actually want to go counterclockwise. That way, I get to the carbon with the chlorine as number two and would continue on going around. So but in this case, I see there's an exact numerical tie with all the substituents. It's one and two in blue, or it's one and two in green. And if you recall, if all, it has to be all your substituents, uh, get exactly the same chain locators, then the alphabet breaks the tie. And chloro comes before methyl in the alphabet here. So the chloro gets the priority, and he's going to be number one. Now, with two substituents, you actually give the chain locator even for substituent number one, typically. And so in this case, chloro and methyl, chloro comes first in the alphabet. So we'll list it first in our list of substituents. And again, we'll use its chain locator here. So one chloro, two methyl, and then cyclohexane. No space again. So let me emphasize again one more time that when chloro was the only substituent in the example above, since it's the only one, it has to be at position one, and you don't list its chain locator. But when you have multiple substituents, even for whatever substituents located at position one, you still list that chain locator typically. All right, so let's look at this last example here. So in this last example of a cycloalkane, uh, again, your ring, in this case cyclohexane, is your parent chain. I've only got one other carbon in the structure. And generally, if you've got a, a ring and not ring areas, whichever one is longer or maybe more complex is your parent chain. That's definitely the cyclohexane in this case. So, But now we've got some problems. We've got multiple ways to number this. So if we start with chlorine as number one, again, we'd go one. And then if I go clockwise, I'd hit the methyl group at two. Had I gone counterclockwise, I wouldn't have hit the carbon with the bromine till four. So this is definitely the superior way. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, but it's definitely not the only way. What if we make where the methyl group is located number one? So, and if he's number one, if I go clockwise, I wouldn't hit where the bromine is located till three. But if I go counterclockwise, I'd hit where the chlorine is located at two, and that would be superior. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
So, and finally, one more way here. So, if we start with the bromines located as number one, so here I definitely want to go uh, counterclockwise because I'll hit the methyl group at three, whereas clockwise I wouldn't hit the chlorine until four. So, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, and as a result, we're going to see different sets of numbers. In blue here, we see the substituents are located at positions one, two, and four. In green, we see the substituents are located at one, two, and five, where the bromine is. And finally, in black here, we see the substituents are located at one, three, and, uh, let's see, one, three, and four. So we can see that everywhere we start, everybody's going to get some substituents starting at one. But the second substituent, three is going to lose. The, these both start at two. That's better. So, but there's still a tie between these two. So then we move on to four beats five. And so numerically here, the top method here, the one outlined in blue, is going to be the method we use. A lot of students make the mistake here of just going to the alphabet and being like, oh, bromos first. So again, we only go to the alphabet to get the numbers if all the chain locators are the same, no matter how you number it. And that's definitely not the case here. So if we go to name this now, so we'll still name the substituents in alphabetical order. So we'll still start with the bromo here. And again, keep in mind, we're using the blue numbers here. So that's going to be four bromo. So, and from there, chloro comes next in the alphabet. So, and that's at position one. So one chloro. So, and then finally two methyl and then our parent chain cyclohexane. Cool. So here we've named three different cyclohexanes specifically. It works the same way if you do cyclopentane or cyclobutane or cycloheptane or anything of that sort. Uh, but we've always named them as the parent chain. Let's do one example where we see where it is not the parent chain, but is still, in this case, uh, a part of your structure and named as a substituent. We'll see that on the next slide. Okay, so in this case, we've got a one, two, three, four, five, six carbon chain that's not part of the ring, and then we've got a four-membered ring. Since the straight chain is longer, it becomes the parent chain here. So in this case, being six carbons long, that's hexane. So, but our substituent here is the ring. So, and four carbon ring is cyclobutane if it's the parent chain, but as a substituent, cyclobutyl still ending with the YL here in this case. And if we go to number our parent chain here, we'll definitely number it from the right to get where the substituent is located, the lower possible number, one here instead of six. So, and if we go to name this, this is simply just one dash cyclobutyl, and then parent chain hexane. Now, having just named a bunch of cycloalkanes, a lot of students will be like, hey, Chad, do we have to list the one here? And you absolutely have to list the one. This is not a cycloalkane for the parent chain. And this cyclobutyl group could have been located at carbon two or three as well. And if we don't say that it's attached at carbon one, we'd actually not know where it was attached. So again, for the straight chain parent chain, you definitely got to give me the location uh, of the substituents here in this case.